Hey YouTube, what's up? So today we're going to talk about how to get your first software engineering internship. Now, getting into software engineering is extremely competitive. The hardest part is starting out. There are very few entry level jobs compared to the amount of applicants who are getting in. So that basically means you have to do whatever you can do to stand out. In this video, I'm going to share a handful of tips to break in to your software engineering internship as easily as possible. Make sure to stick through to the end to see all of them. And I have a special bonus. These tips helped me get my first software engineering internship right out of my coding bootcamp. The whole process took about six weeks, which is really fast. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you think this provides value. So the first tip I have is to start early. Most large companies start the recruiting process in the fall, which means that you have to start as early as possible. Start making your connections in August, September, or a few months before the actual deadline. If companies post their internships a few months before they even start, start applying right away. Do not wait until the last minute. Now, even if the deadline is only a few months or weeks away, these next few tips will help you to break in regardless of the time pressure. A referral is the number one way to increase your chances of getting a software engineering internship because it shows that a trusted employee is giving you credibility and is recommending you to the company. Now there are a handful of ways to get a referral. If you're a college student, you can talk to alumni, you can talk to friends at your college who might know someone, and you can also talk to your professors who might have connections at big company. Now if you don't have a college degree, there are also other ways to break in. LinkedIn is an amazing tool for finding people who work at these companies. You can search in the search box for people who work at these companies, for secondary connections, first connections. LinkedIn is so powerful and you can message someone directly. Now, another way to ask for a referral is go on Facebook and find people who work at this company. You can use Facebook's graph search. You can search friends of friends, pretty much anything you can do to find some kind of connection in here. Third, you can go to a networking event. Networking events usually bring many software engineers. They have many of them in big cities and even outside of big cities. If you go to a tech networking event of some kind, whether it's software, design, you're bound to find some kind of recruiter who can get you into this company. Now, once you've made this connection, if you don't know them directly, I would set up a 15 minute coffee chat whether it's in person grabbing a coffee at a coffee shop or over video chat. All you need are 15 minutes of their time. And the best thing to do is do not ask for a job right away. Don't do that. You need to ask them, how's the company culture? What's their experience like at the company? Ask them to talk about themselves. That will get them to like you more. Now, at the end of this conversation, ask them what you can do to stand out in the application process. Once they've given you that answer, politely ask them if they can give you a referral to one of the positions that you're applying for. Another alternative is to wait a handful of days after you've gotten their contact information, then send a follow-up email or text or phone call asking for a referral. Now the next tip is do not send your resume off into a black hole. Gone are the days where you can just go in Indeed or any kind of job board and send in a resume and hope for the best. You have hundreds, if not thousands of applicants sending their resume into this black hole regardless. Half the time, these companies have automated systems that lop off 75% of resumes, regardless of skill level or anything else. Some companies have automated systems that find keywords and they'll chop off any resume that doesn't have these keywords in them. There are a handful of ways to connect with people, but some of the best ways are through LinkedIn, you can connect with somebody on LinkedIn and send them a note as you connect with them. If they haven't responded, wait a few days and then send them a direct message if they've accepted your connection request. Another way, which is also a great way, is using a tool to find people's emails who work at companies. There are a handful of Gmail plugins, such as Clearbit Connect and Hunter IO, which allow you to input either a company or some kind of keyword, and it will bring you back an email of that person who works at that company. Once you've connected with them, send them an intro email, introduce yourself, and then ask them how it is working at the company. Just like I said previously with reaching out to alumni. You can ask them a handful of questions, and then after the fact, respond back and see if they can connect you with a hiring manager for this role. 
If they don't respond once, wait about a week and send them a follow-up message. If that doesn't work, they probably won't respond. So one tactic you can use is find someone else at the company and follow up with them. Once you've gone through three or four of these people, it probably isn't a great idea to keep going on and on at this company, but there are also other ways around this. Now, another way to increase your chances at getting noticed and getting a referral is having a great portfolio. This is not absolutely necessary, but it will definitely increase your luck if you have one. Having projects, putting them under GitHub and LinkedIn, and making YouTube videos on technical choices and design decisions is a great way to beef up your portfolio in a quick and easy, relatable way. This will basically let you stand out against 90% of the crowd. Not many people are going to go through the effort of making a video explaining their app in detail. Another trick is in your LinkedIn project section, putting in these projects with a good thumbnail, a bunch of screenshots about the project and an explanation. Once somebody sees this, whether it's in your resume, on your LinkedIn, or somebody who you've connected with asking for a referral, that will greatly increase your chances that they will pass you through the interview process. Now, one of the next things you can do is definitely prepare for the technical interview. Without passing the technical interview or even getting halfway through, even if you've gotten this far, there's no chance you're going to go further. You have to do pretty well in the technical interview and show at least some competency. There are a bunch of ways to practice for the technical interview, depending on your skill set and the job that you're applying for. Know the concepts, at least the basics, down pat, and practice with people. There are a bunch of different platforms where you can go practice, whether it's leak code, practicing algorithms and other kind of questions, or it's Pramp, which allows you to interview with people and practice together. Another way is sit down with some other people who are either going through your same curriculum, whether it's college, a coding bootcamp, or other software engineers you know, and ask them to interview you and see how you do. If they can give you live feedback, that is excellent. The more data you can collect about how you do in interviews, the better prepared you'll be and the more you can refine your interviewing skills. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. This last tip is a tip that helped me increase my job efficiency by at least four times. Now I believe that everything needs to be tracked no matter what. Gathering data points, being organized, will help your job search efficiency by a ton. There are some great tools out there, and my preferred ones are Streak, which is a Gmail plugin, and also Airtable. You can also use a spreadsheet such as Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. For tracking data, whenever I apply to a company, I track a bunch of details. The things that I track for the job search are the name of the company, the position I'm applying for, the source of the position, whether it's something like AngelList, or indeed including the URL, the person's name who I reached out to, their LinkedIn, their email, and the last date of correspondence. Having you track your job search will show you tangible progress throughout the stages of the application. I kind of like to think of it as a sales CRM. When you're going through a job search, you're basically selling yourself. There are a handful of stages you have to go through to get this job. The first stage being sending in the application, the second stage being reaching out to someone who's real in the company, etc. The last stage is getting into the on-site and then getting the interview. After every single stage, I try to send some kind of thank you. It can be super quick, super short, but sending a kind of thank you is will completely set you above the crowd. It doesn't necessarily have to be handwritten. I think those days are kind of over. You can just send any kind of correspondence, preferably email, Allowing me to track my job search, let me set concrete goals. During my last job search, I had a concrete goal of applying to 50 jobs a day. Within three days, I had applied to 150 jobs. This increased my chances tenfold at getting an actual job and bringing more leads where they could bring me into the interview process. This is what allowed me to get my first coding job in the middle of my boot camp. I was able to start the process right in the middle of the boot camp, have technical interviews before the end of it, and I had a job lined up two weeks after the boot camp. Now, the best thing to do is start this as quickly as possible. The more offers you can get lined up, the more choice you have, and the more choice you have allows you to have the most flexibility to get the best offer that you can. 
If you enjoyed this video, again, please like, subscribe, and shoot a comment down below. If you're looking for an internship, below in the comments, let me know what kind of company you're looking at and what some of your struggles have been. Maybe I can help out. I'll make sure to reply to all incoming comments and I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks again.